want to talk a little bit about some of the reactions from various people, starting with our politicians. This is article here from good old Lindsey Graham. Political eliminate eradicate level. U.S. politicians escalate rhetoric against Hamas. There's a quote in here from Lindsey Graham. Do whatever the hell you have to do to defend yourself. Level the place. Senator Lindsey Graham. Level the place. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. If it were the other way around, and let's say Israel attacked Hamas first, dropped a bunch of bombs in the uh, Gaza Strip or the West Bank, do you think Lindsey Graham would be saying to the Palestinians, do whatever the hell you have to do to defend yourself, level the place? Do you think he'd be saying that? Of course he fucking wouldn't. Another quote here. Hamas must be eradicated... And Israel must respond disproportionately to this and any future attacks from any enemy. Senator Marco Rubio. Seems like they're taking Marco Rubio's advice. They're definitely responding disproportionately. Evacuating a million people. Bombing them as they try to go away. Did you guys see that video? There was a supposedly... They left open this supposed safe corridor. They ordered a million people to evacuate from the north of the Gaza Strip. Remember, the Gaza Strip is only 25 miles long. So they ordered a million people to leave their homes. They gave them 24 hours to evacuate. Anybody who's left after this 24 hours, we can't guarantee your safety. Like, they were trying to guarantee their fucking safety in the first place. Dropping bombs on schools and shit. But anyway. So then, these people try to leave using the the route that they told them would be safe, and then they fucking bomb the people that are in that route. They start dropping bombs on cars and shit. The fuck are you supposed to think? I mean, imagine that was you. Imagine you lived there. Imagine you're just a person, right? Just a guy. You had nothing to do with any of this shit. You're trying to do what they tell you to do, and then you see a shitload of people get fucking murdered. That That's murder, is what that is. That's a war crime. Can we just say that dropping bombs on civilians as they're evacuating? Can we all agree that that's a fucking war crime? Is there anybody out here who actually believes that's justified? How come we're not seeing any reaction to that? How come every time I go and I turn on the news, it's always people like saying, do you condemn the, the attack from Hamas on Israel? Yes, I do. I do condemn it. But this shit ain't right either. All right. It is wrong to go and take hostages and murder people and all this other shit, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, wrong. It is also wrong to drop bombs on fucking fleeing civilians, especially when you told them to fucking flee and they were following your fucking directions. Can we all just agree that that's wrong? Nikki Haley, also running for president. This is sick and we have to treat sick people the way they deserve to be treated and eliminate them. Eliminate them. These are our senators and shit who are out there saying this stuff. Is it any wonder that an insane old man can go stab a 16-year-old kid when he's turning on the news and hearing shit like this? Ridiculous. Another one I found. ADL director asks if Hamas is writing MSNBC scripts and coverage of attack on Israel. Now, there used to be a video here, but it seems like they changed the video. Seems like they just embed one player here, and then it just updates across every fucking article, so if you don't get to the article the same day that it publishes, you miss the video. But let's read a little bit of this. The director of the Anti-Defamation League criticized MSNBC while appearing on the network for the way it was covering the ongoing fighting between Hamas and Israeli military forces. While I am sad and trying to cope, I'll be honest, I'm angry. I'm angry with the world that allowed the dehumanization of Israelis and sanitized the terrorism of, of Hamas, said Jonathan Greenblatt during an appearance Monday on Morning Joe. And I must say I love this show and I love this network, but I've got to ask who's writing the scripts, Hamas. See, this is what we need to remember, right? Why are we seeing near 100% pro-positive Israeli coverage when it comes to this? Every single network you turn on, every single talk show you go to, every single news outlet, all of them are saying, you know, this is all that they're getting. 
It's 100% just pro-Israeli go, 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 go. And it's really only the fringe networks and online shit that even talk about Palestinian casualties right now. Somewhere in the area of 3,030 Palestinian women and children and civilians have been killed, murdered, since this shit started. Remember, that's only, I mean, 3,000. That's like a very low estimate. That's barely any. In real life, it's probably close. It's probably four times that. Because we don't know what happens during the fog of war. I mean, they've been leveling entire fucking neighborhoods. People getting trapped under buildings and stuff. They're going to be counting the dead for weeks. And they haven't even started the ground invasion yet. So, no. It's going to be way more than three. It's way more than 3,000 now. Okay, that's just an estimate. All right. You don't even see anybody talk about that on the networks, on the mainstream media. And I hate saying that because it makes me sound like I'm some kind of like deranged fucking right winger whenever you say mainstream media. But it's true. It's true. When I say mainstream media, that includes conservative media because all the mainstream media actually is conservative. They are. Even MSNBC and all that. When it comes to this shit, when it comes to... Israel, Israel, Palestine, they're all conservative, right? It is really only the fringe media, the leftist fringe media, things like Democracy Now! and stuff like that, that even talk about Palestinian casualties and the fact that these people don't have food, they don't have water, that they're being bombed left and right, that children are fucking being buried under rubble. And no one gives a fuck in this country it's just ridiculous why don't they give a fuck it's because well it's because really israel holds all the power they hold all the power they have all of the uh, government resources they need to get their message out and they have very receptive audience here in the united states because the media is dominated by fucking conservatives <laughs> conservatives who are motivated for one reason or another mainly having to do with uh, racism and bigotry into supporting Israel in this conflict we can get into that you know if you guys want I mean the reason why conservatives support Israel is not because they like Jewish people keep that in mind too no Right, conservatives do not like no. It has nothing to do with support for Jewish people or the Israeli citizens or whatever. They don't give a fuck about any of that. Half of the conservatives, the, conser the conservative Christians in this country, need Israel to exist because if Israel doesn't exist, then Jesus can't come back, and then they'll never get the fucking rapture. And that's why they support Israel. That's exactly why they support Israel. You know, whenever you hear them say Israel has a right to exist, why would conservative Christian preachers and shit be talking about Israel's right to exist? Why would they give a shit about that? Especially when half these people are fucking anti-Semitic. When the chips are down, you know, when the lights turn off, they put their fucking white hoods on and go out and burn crosses and make up bullshit conspiracy theories about George Soros and shit. So why the fuck do any of these people give a fuck about Israel? It's because Israel has to be there. Israel has to exist or else the end times can't happen. So that's why these people like fucking Israel, right? Then, of course, there's also, a, you know, the actual government, the United States government supports Israel because of strategic reasons as a hedge against uh, Arab dictatorships and the reasons. And, and it really all has to do with geopolitics and ultimately it's because... They're on our side against Russia. Is basically the reason why they like Israel. Right. And that foot is way too small. Look how small that foot is. I need to make this foot bigger. <laughs> Let's paste that down there. Let's bring this down here. Let's make this bigger. See, this is, this is why I love Photoshop. Because you can do shit like this. There you go. Much, much, much better. Let's flatten that down. And now we gotta clean up the line work. Here is 
The Hill. Rubio, Israel should completely eradicate Hamas in Gaza. Completely eradicate. Senator Marco Rubio said Monday that Israel has no choice but to completely eradicate Hamas in Gaza after it carried out the worst attack in Israel in history. Israel has no choice but to seek the complete eradication of Hamas in Gaza. Rubio wrote a post on Twitter. I refuse to call it X. There simply is no diplomatic solution or measured response available. Rubio, the vice chairman of Senate Intelligence Committee, acknowledged that such action will come at a horrifying price. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's scroll down a little bit because I'm not interested in reading the rest of this shit. This tragically necessary effort will come at a horrifying price, Rubio added. But the price of failing to permanently eliminate this group of sadistic savages is even more horrifying. More quotes from this asshole. As we continue to account for the horrors of appalling terrorist assault against Israel this weekend and the hundreds of innocent civilians who were murdered, we're seeking the immense scale and reach of this tragedy. Oh, wait, that was actually Biden. <laughs> He's kind of an asshole, too, about this. Biden is sort of given a complete 100% carte blanche to Israel here. Although I have heard that in his last tour, he is trying to get them to turn the water back on for people at least so that people don't fucking die of thirst so maybe biden's actually trying to do something uh positive here anyway that's uh marco fucking rubio here here is one of the howler monkeys my favorite republican howler, howler monkey representative marjorie taylor green she has kind of a strange take on this let's see what she has to say Mitch McConnell just stated on the Senate floor that this attack on Israel is a threat to America. It is not. Hmm, surprised. The threat to America is happening every day at our own border. Uh, of course. America should not engage in another war in the Middle East and must stop funding the war in Ukraine. Well, you know, at least she's consistent. I mean, she hates uh, Jewish people. She's not going to suddenly start liking them for just because they were attacked. So, there you go. She is against the war in Ukraine, and I guess, okay, well, in order for her to remain consistent, she has to be against war in the Middle East, too. So, congratulations to Marjorie Taylor Greene. I mean, I guess, broken clocks and all that shit. Here's another one from Representative Howler Monkey. I stand with Israel, and I'll be there. Oh, wow, that was pretty quick. <laughs> she turned that shit around really fast. When was this? This was October 12th. When was this one? This was October 16th. Okay, well, I guess maybe this is the one that comes afterwards. So I guess when it first happened, she was like totally in solidarity with them and then turned around later. I don't know. But our conference needs to call us to a vote for speaker instead of creating photo ops while our leadership is too scared to go to the floor. They all have security details, and we don't. Tomorrow is Hamas Jihad Day. Are we going to drag this out and be forced to fly home when everybody's security has an extremely high alert, or are we going to be the big boys and girls and vote for a speaker? Hamas Jihad Day, which I will talk about a little bit later. But basically, all of the conservatives went bananas because somebody said something and they totally misinterpreted it. And they thought that on a certain given day, which I think apparently was October 13th, that every single Muslim in the world was going to turn into a bloodthirsty killer. That, of course, didn't fucking happen. So, good to see that representative insane howler monkey crazy woman is just still crazy. But at least, hey, at least she was a little consistent. Gotta give her a little bit there. Ben Shapiro is taking this pretty bad. Here's Ben Shapiro. He's posting memes. And it looks like he posted this himself. Civilian Tomas, why are the Jews doing this? You could... Here's the thing about this meme. You could just label this IDF, you know, Israeli Defense Forces, civilians. <laughs> why are the Jews doing this? And it would make perfect sense still. Because... You know, the Israeli military is as we speak right now. Right now, as we're watch as you at home are watching this video, they are murdering civilians. 
that had nothing to do with this whatsoever. Once again, just need to repeat myself. It is not good to murder civilians, whether you are Hamas, whether you are Israel, the Israeli military. Neither one of them. It is not good if either of them murder civilians. All right. Remember, I'm neutral in this shit. My official stance is I'm neutral. <laughs> both of these people are, are fucking, you know, both sides in this conflict, as far as I'm concerned, are committing atrocities right now. And so, fuck both of these people. Seriously. But this is Ben Shapiro. Apparently, he has nothing to say here. And, in fact, is making fun of the entire thing. That is what memes are, by the way. When somebody posts a meme like this... how many, I mean, when was the last time you saw a meme that was actually poignant and made you think about something? Never. You know why? Because memes don't do that. All right? Memes are not something that you post in order to communicate a nuanced point it's when you make fun of shit is when you post a meme that's what it is you're supposed to see this and laugh because it's supposed to be funny so why is Ben Shapiro making fun of the death of civilians because he's a piece of shit that's why Ben Shapiro has often spoken out and expressed his bigotry and racism against the Palestinians. I think, isn't there a very famous quote where he said, oh, they like living in raw sewage or something like that? I mean, keep in mind, these are people living in essentially a prison. Gaza is the world's largest open-air prison, is what has been described as. They have no control over anything. Israel controls their water, controls their imports, controls their food, controls their electricity, won't let anybody fucking leave. So it's like, oh, they just like living in raw sewage. Yeah, never mind the fences, the barbed wire fucking fences that surround them. And all the guns pointed at them, forcing them to live there. Oh, they dislike it. Unfucking believable Apparently, he's gotten into a Twitter war with Andrew Tate, of all people. Because Andrew Tate is supporting Palestine. Remember, Andrew Tate is Muslim. He has he converted to Muslim, converted to Islam. By the way, he wasn't born Muslim. Andrew Tate converted to Islam because he says Christianity is weak, and you know Islam is strong, and it's going to end up winning the culture war or some shit like that. That's why he converted to Islam. He doesn't seem to follow it very much. You know, you're not supposed to be a criminal, and you know you're not supposed to drink alcohol like he does. You're not supposed to. Oh, I don't know. Whore people out like he does. You're not supposed to rip people off like he does. So he's not a very, very good Muslim. <laughs> he is and remains a giant piece of shit who deserves to be in fucking prison. Let's not forget that. But I don't want to read any of this dumbass article. I just want to see the actual fucking tweet. Where's the fucking tweet? It was here. God damn it, they took the fucking tweet down. It was here. Uh, you son of a bitch. There was a fucking tweet here. You know what, we're gonna look it up. We're gonna look it up because that's bullshit. I was gonna show you guys the goddamn tweet. And I will not be stopped now. Shapiro Tate tweet. Okay, here's the goddamn tweet. This Newsweek. Ben Shapiro, let me assure you, as someone who has not pimped women or bragged about it, that morality requires that those who rape women and kidnap children must be eradicated, not negotiated with. Andrew Tate, Mr. Tough Guy, let me assure you, as someone who does his own fighting, as opposed to excitedly encouraging others to do it for him while sitting at home on a comfy chair, peace is always worth consideration. Now, Andrew Tate is correct. I fucking hate Andrew Tate. And this is why I hate war, because <laughs> you end up agreeing with people that you fucking hate. Andrew Tate is a giant, giant piece of fucking human garbage. I would not urinate on his face if he was on fire. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't dip him in dog shit if he was suffering and burning on fire, and, and that was the only thing we had to put the fire out. Fuck him, I'd let him burn to death, because he's a piece of fucking shit. He deserves every bad fucking thing that ever happens to him. But he's correct. 
Peace is always worth a conversation, right? And just even this tweet, the way that he says this, let me assure you as someone who does his own fighting, fuck you. (laughs) Someone who does his own fighting. Like this asshole's ever been in a war. He's never been in a fucking war. He was a kickboxer for fuck's sake. Fighting in a ring where there's rules. All right, where they'll stop if you actually get hurt. All right, he's never been out there fighting for his fucking life in a war with, like, machine guns and bombs and shit going off. No, he's never fucking done that. Fuck you, Andrew Tate. And fuck you for making me agree with you, because he's true. Peace is always worth a conversation. He's exactly right. Is it because he's a Muslim that he he suddenly has compassion for the Palestinians? Because I could tell you right now, Andrew Tate doesn't give a flying fuck about the Palestinians at all. He doesn't give a fuck about those people. At all. I don't know. Maybe he has some little tiny nugget, little little moat, little teeny tiny popcorn kernel of decency in that hideously fucking deformed and slimy soul that he has. Maybe just that little tiny bit of popcorn kernel of decency just popped when he saw what's going on over there and decided, yeah, war is bad. I guess I can agree with Andrew Tate on that war is bad. If he was hanging on for dear life off a cliff, I wouldn't bend over to save his ass. Fuck no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't do shit to save his ass. I wouldn't fuck him. But he's correct. He's absolutely correct. And I'm pissed off that I have to actually say something nice about Andrew Tate. Ben Shapiro, of course, doesn't have that little tiny popcorn kernel of decency at all. Ben Shapiro has zero fucking decency. He doesn't give a fuck about anybody, especially people in a country 5,000 miles away that he's never met. He doesn't give a fuck about any of them at all. If it was the conservative position to support the Palestinians over Israel, he would be barking the other tune in a nanosecond because everything Ben Shapiro does is for money. So fuck Ben Shapiro. And it makes perfect fucking sense that he would be a war hawk asshole demanding the deaths of civilians over this too. I mean, Andrew Tate versus Ben Shapiro, it's like, that's kind of a sim. it's symbolic. It's symbolic of what's going on over there in this war. Both sides in this conflict are hideous monsters. Just like Ben Shapiro and Andrew Tate, they're both hideous monsters. It's like, there you go. That's, that's war right there. Everybody in a war is a monster. Hey, I see that we actually got a chat here. Grizzly, hey, quick additional info. BBC News admitted to false reports about anti-Semitic chants at pro-Palestinian demonstrations in London. Basically, they said pro-Palestinian means pro-Hamas and got called out. Good. Good. I'm glad that, uh, you know, they admitted to false reports because that's that's true. That happens a lot, you know, when there is an event like what happened before, like like this terrorist attack that happened. When that kind of thing happens and tensions are high, you know, it's like the fog of war, basically, is what it's called. And a lot of false reports get spread around because people don't know what's happening because a lot of reports happen really quick and things come in left and right and stuff does, stories don't get vetted, that kind of thing. And news organizations just sort of have to report on whatever. Because that's their job. Their job is to report on things. So they say, well, you know, this rumor came in and that one came in. And then we're getting reports of this happening and that happening. And that kind of thing happened at 9-11 as well. 2001, it was funny because it was before social media was really a thing. You didn't really, I mean, people had their like personal homepages and like that's it. You didn't have things like Twitter and Facebook. So, but still, misinformation got spread around a lot. And I remember seeing things like, videos like people would go to like bulletin boards and they would post videos of supposedly it would be like oh these are palestinians cheering after the destruction of the twin towers and then you find out like years later it's like oh no this was just footage from a birthday party and that shit like that happens all the fucking time especially when it comes to like events like this and it and it seems like conservatives love to make shit like that up in order to kind of spread hate. And that's what it is. They're using this as an opportunity to spread hate and fear and recruit people to their side. 
because these people are parasites, right? The conservatives, the fucking racist, the alt-right people, people like fucking, like in hate groups and shit like that, and the Groiper army, and like, you know, Nick Fuentes and his fucking band of nincompoops. They use every opportunity they get, and they, they, I mean, that's one thing I guess you can like, you know, you gotta hand it to them. They're very, very media savvy when it comes to using social media and capitalizing on a, on current events like this. Capitalizing on current events in order to spread their hatred. Because you see it just every fucking time. Every single time there's like some kind of politically charged event, these people are all over it. Spreading misinformation. Hello folks, if you like what I do and you want to support the channel, please consider buying something from my SD shop, supporting me on Patreon, liking and subscribing, and checking me out across my social media links listed below. Thank you all so much, and see you next time.